Okay, we're recording. Howdy, y'all. Hi, my name is Madison. My name is Catherine. And this is Spooky Oki. Spooky Oki Podcast. Where you get to join us on all our adventures and exploration in the spookiest places in Oklahoma. We got some spooky places, y'all. We have a lot of spooky places. Um, more than I thought when we started this. So we're pretty excited. We're not your typical like paranormal podcast. We're going to tell you the history and the spooky things that have happened, but we are actually going out there ourselves to investigate. And so we're bringing you guys along on that journey. We're really excited about it. Yeah, and we're new to the whole paranormal investigation scene. <laughs> Completely new. Like, we don't know what we're doing. No, not not at all. And um, so we're, we're figuring this out and um, bringing y'all with us and uh, I'm going to tell some fun stories while we're at it. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, we actually, this is the first episode you're hearing, but we actually went out to this first place already. Um, so you'll be getting that in future weeks, hopefully. We had a few um, technical mishaps. I can't be trusted with nice things. Catherine broke everything we had. <laughs> um, not really. She did not. Um, she did sit on the mic and break that. And then um, we had a replacement, thank goodness. And then she didn't turn hers on. So our entire second half of the recording is just me rambling. So thankfully, though, we had a, a backup recording. It yes. Not be as good of audio. But... Right. You're going to get to hear like our EVP recorder instead of our actual nice mics yeah. for some parts because um, if, if you only heard our nice mics, it would just be me responding to questions that you never heard because Catherine's mic was not on. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you live and you learn. Maybe eventually we'll get better at this. I doubt it. Maybe. We'll we can see. help. We can help. Okay, right. so Madison, tell tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay. I am how old am I? I'm twenty six. Ooh, <laughs> I'm sweaty. I'm nervous. Um <laughs> I'm twenty six. I have grown up in Kanawha, Oklahoma, living here currently. I, what is there to know about me? What do you do? I am an actress. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's also midnight. I feel like we should throw that out there. Yeah. It's midnight. Yeah. Um, and we're really tired. We just got back from literally ghost hunting for the first time. And oh boy, was it spooky. It was I'm spooky. sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm Madison. I'm an actress, a former teacher. I'm also a virtual assistant. I just do a little bit of everything. And yeah, that's that's about it. Live on a farm. Um, and I like to research spooky places. Very nice. Catherine, tell us a little bit about you. So I uh, was born and raised in Shawnee, Oklahoma. I went to school, high school at Conowa, which is how I know Madison. Yes. Um, I currently live in Shawnee. I teach at a school nearby Shawnee. I'm a high school Spanish teacher. Go Spanish. Um, and let's see. Uh, my grandmother currently lives with me. So uh, we get to be crazy together. It's so cute. Um, so precious. Yeah, she's a crazy lady. I love her. <laughs> let's see. I'm single. I'm straight. Yeah, me too um throwing that out there yeah you know if there's any eligible bachelors out there <laughs> hopping right into that cool <laughs> we're both on the market <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm not kidding but i'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> sorry let's move on <laughs> <laughs> oh really gosh you're derailed um yeah and i i love listening to um to podcasts and uh i've used to hate scary stuff and then basically when i was in college i started liking spooky stuff yeah. and when madison suggested we do this i was like heck yes let's do it yeah i i also like did not like spooky stuff at all um i still can't watch scary movies they scare me too much same but i'm cool with like actually going out to the scary places for some reason yeah somehow um, that's easier than watching a scary movie i still am not gonna watch yeah, a scary movie exactly i will talk about it and actually go there in person, but I can't watch it. Yeah, so, same. Yeah, we both love spooky podcasts. We really love, and that's why we drink. Mm -hmm. 
Em and Christine, we love you guys. Yes. So. Love the true crime stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Yep. All right. So we're still, you know, testing out the format of these episodes. Um, We won't, we hopefully won't be rambling too much at the beginning like we are right now. Um, Although, who knows? Maybe we will. Maybe we will. We don't know. So the plan right now is to kind of cover all the spooky things in Oklahoma. We'll be mostly paranormal, but we're going to do kind of a paranormal story for you guys and then go out and investigate whatever place we're talking about. We're also going to have true crime episodes every month and a guest star episode every month where we bring in somebody to tell their own personal spooky story. So we're pretty excited about that. Who knows? It could change, but that's the plan right now. Yeah, and I think we're going to try to kind of trade off doing the research and telling the story about the place. And so this is my turn. So I am going to tell you guys about the Violet Springs and Kanawha Cemeteries. There's some really, really spooky things. All right, should we jump right in? Let's do it. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I should start out by saying I got most of my information from like a few books and a few websites. I got I got it from the book Haunted Shawnee, Oklahoma, the book Ghost Towns of Oklahoma, the book Murdered by Human Wolves, and then the websites okcemeteries.net, the Norman Transcript, and Muskogee Phoenix. So jumping right in. The town of Violet was founded in the early 1890s and only lasted until September 29th, 1906. That's not a long time. It's really not a long time. It was only like 15 years-ish. Yeah. Like at the most. So the town was already like gone by the time Oklahoma became a state, which is really crazy to me. It's most commonly known by the name Violet Springs because of the wild violets that grew at the nearby springs, but it was technically named Violet from what I found. Um, But it's known as Violet Springs. It's located half a mile from the border of Oklahoma Territory and Seminole Nation, and it was known as one of the most wild and wooly whiskey towns of the time. Ooh, so whiskey sounds like town. a fun place. I know. I'm like, we need a whiskey town right? right in these days. There were a lot of whiskey towns back then. So I want to know if there are. Like, we should we should look that up at are some there point. Still are there towns? still whiskey towns? I don't think so because it was like they were only a thing because alcohol was banned oh that makes in sense certain places so actually my next bullet point let me read that to you whiskey towns were really common pre-statehood as the federal government had banned alcohol on indian reservations okay the whiskey towns were on private land however and were not subject to this prohibition so as a result multiple whiskey towns which were pretty much literally just a saloon and they called it a town um nice. popped up practically overnight Right on the edge of, like, different reservations and things like that, where okay. it was, like, banned. Um, some of the most notorious whiskey towns were in Pottawatomie County. Nice. So that's in case y'all um, aren't familiar with Oklahoma geography. Pottawatomie County is um, where I live, being in Shawnee. And it is very close to where I live. Yes. Um, so Pottawatomie County... Um, is bordered on the east by the Creek and Seminole Nations. I live in the Seminole Nation, um, Seminole County. And it's bordered on the south by the Chickasaw Nation. So some of the whiskey towns like Earlsboro and Watt became actual towns and built mixed economies by offering like hardware and general stores for homesteaders in addition to the saloons. But then other towns had just one purpose, alcohol. Nice. Yeah. Fun places. <laughs> Um, actually not so that's fun. like they were like very very scary i'll say that's like new orleans now right <laughs> basically i <laughs> love new orleans I, I do too it's one or of austin places. uh is it sixth street or fifth street fifth street i don't know i've never been to austin yeah oh yeah you gotta go yeah, yeah, yeah. i hear but, I, it's I hear either fifth things. or sixth street i never remember which but yeah that's, that's the party street i see a lot of like projects filming there it's yeah. just so far away um, so either way So, the most notorious and sinister of these were, a name I'm going to mispronounce, Keokuk Falls. I don't know if I said that right. K-E-O-K-U-K. Keokuk. Mm -hmm. Um, Corner, which we are totally going to do a future episode on because it is wild, you guys. It was a wild town. Okay, and then the last kind of most notorious and sinister was Violet Springs. 
of what we're talking about today. Nice. So it's said that as many as eight men were killed in Violet Springs in a given day. And the highest population in the town was only 600. So wow, like a lot of people to die in a day. Yeah. And it was like all the time, not just like a freak, like crazy day. It was, yeah. that was pretty average. Like people just got murdered all the time. Um, the area was so violent that an entire corner of the town cemetery was reserved for those who were murdered in the town. Wow. Because they would have so many people like passing through to like go to the saloons and things like that. And they would just get murdered while they were there. And so it's like, what do you do with them? Yeah. It sounds so like just... it should have been called Violent Springs. <laughs> hey. Hey. Dad joke for the win. Oh, good one. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've actually heard it referred to as Violent Springs. Really? Because it was so violent. That's yeah. funny. Um, and sometimes I accidentally like say Violent Springs. Between 1895 and 1905, the town had five stores and eight saloons. So you see where their priorities were. <laughs> I love it. More saloons than you had stores. Exactly. You had more choices of where to get your drink than you did of how to get your dress. Right? <laughs> so in 1899, a fire destroyed every store building and multiple homes in Violet Springs. Uh, Violet <laughs> Springs. <laughs> That's just saying it now. <laughs> I'm going to be saying that the whole time now. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> while many of those were rebuilt at the time, all that remains of Violet Springs today is the cemetery. And then the nearby town of Kanawha was founded in 1904, just inside of the Seminole Nation. And many of the residents of Violet Springs moved there. Kanawha did not follow in the footsteps of the nearby whiskey towns and instead became a quiet farming community. I wish it had stayed that way. I wish it had stayed that way. <laughs> now there's just a lot of mess. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not as not as nice and wholesome anymore. It's but... not. But, you know, I, I guess that kind of makes sense, though, because, like, if you think about it, like, the people who moved in were, all the were people literally from... from the whiskey town. So, like, it makes sense. It does make it's sense. a little yeah. wild now. Um, and actually, I mean, it didn't stay, like, calm, like a quiet little farming community. Because literally my next bullet point is not to say that Kanawha didn't have some crazy things happen later yeah. on. Um, so, for example, in 1931, the bank was robbed by Pretty Boy Floyd. Wow. I did not know that until I did this research. Yeah, I didn't know like, that. Like, I've literally grown up here and I had no idea. I don't um, ever remember hearing that story. And I actually heard that it was robbed more than once by him, but I couldn't find that. Okay. So, but I heard it was robbed twice by him. The same bank in Kanawha. That's embarrassing. Right? <laughs> but I don't know if that's true, but I read somewhere that it was robbed twice, but then the only thing I saw was like, 1931, it was that's, robbed. That's the case. That's kind of sad. It's like, really? Like, like it was so him. easy to rob that you just went back to rob it again? And, and like, you did it successfully? Like, you did it twice? twice? <laughs> yeah. I So I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> that's what I read. So it wouldn't surprise me. Um, the other kind of crazy thing was that from 1943 to 1945, the Kanawha National Guard Armory held between 75 and 80 German prisoners of war. And th this is such a random location. Right. It's This is straight up middle of nowhere. Our population yeah. is like maybe a thousand people. I know. I think it's like 1,100 actually. Yeah. It's gone down from when, when I was in school, it was about, it was a little over 1,200. Right. I know it's gone down quite a bit though yeah so i think we're probably closer to a thousand now like it's a tiny town my yeah. graduating class was 35 people my graduating class was a big class and i graduated mm -hmm. with 46 yeah so i mean this is not a big town so the fact that they had like 80 german prisoners of war in the armory which like i've seen that building it's still there yeah and it is not big no so i don't it's isn't that really what, crazy like, by the park by the park yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. we would line up there for con on band -Aid. yeah <laughs> exactly. We spent a lot of time over over there. That's supposed to be haunted, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe we'll have to talk about that someday. Yeah. Anyway, um, but overall, it was a typical farming community. Hmm. That just... Anything, what anything is just like, oh, it's a normal place. No. Red flag, no. red flag, red yeah. flag. No. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah, especially when it's like, nothing bad has ever happened and here. it's like, you are asking for yeah. something to happen. That means don't move there because something will happen. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, anyway, on from how crazy the area was and how Kanawha is just a typical farming community. 
um, just across the springs from just across the springs, just across the street. I'm sorry, it's midnight. I'm tired. Just across the street from Violet Springs Cemetery is Kanawha Cemetery, which is home to one of the most famous urban legends in Oklahoma. Y'all so tired. This is a crazy one. This is wild and so sad. I was doing this research yesterday and I was really upset. Like, I was very sad about it. Mm -hmm. It made me so sad the whole day. This story is tragic. So, hold on. Buckle up. Here we go. So, in this cemetery sat an old gravestone with the engraving Murdered by Human Wolves. It's, like, a really famous headstone. Um, It's in a lot of, like, the articles of, like, mysterious things in Oklahoma and, like, all of those sort of things. Like, this is on, like, every list. Um, It became really, really famous for having the engraving murdered by human wolves. It's um, such an ominous it's thing. It's very ominous. Thing. And when you see it, like, it it looks very ominous, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a really strange thing to have on a gravestone. But this is the gravestone of 18-year-old Catherine Cross. Catherine was born on March 13, 1899. So she's a Pisces. We love Pisces. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an Aries. I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo moon. But she was a Pisces. We love Pisces. My brother's a Pisces. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm rambling again because it's midnight. So Catherine was born to John Taylor Cross and Mary Catherine Cross. Very little is known about her life, but we do know that she was the oldest of eight children. There were four boys and four girls. Golly, that's a lot. It is a lot, but really not for back then. <laughs> I know it's not for it back just then. It seems but like so many. Especially like, I'm, I mean, I'm an only child and I'm just like, your family's big. You got three. And right. I'm like, eight. Dang. <laughs> yeah. So it is a lot. That would be a full house. Her family moved from, I'm going to say this wrong. I think it's Valonia, Arkansas. Does that sound right to you? Sure. I don't know my Arkansas geography. I'm just going to be honest. Oh, well, me neither. That's why we're doing an Oklahoma podcast. That's why we do an Oklahoma podcast. So our best guess is Valonia, Arkansas to Conowa, Oklahoma in search of farmland and a better life for the children. However, Catherine died on October 10th, 1917, at the age of 18. So sad. So sad. Rumors about her death quickly spread, encouraged by the strange engraving on her headstone. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it just started storming. It's raining so hard now. It just, like, started pouring. Like, as soon as we started talking about this. Ah! I don't like that. Okay. Moving okay, on, okay. Um, rumors about her death quickly spread, encouraged by the strange engraving on her headstone. For over 100 years, people have theorized about what really happened to Catherine. So I'm going to go through kind of some of the theories and the rumors. Um, most of them sound absolutely ridiculous, but I'm going to go through them anyway because this is a paranormal podcast and I'm going to share all the possible paranormal things. Yes, all the theories. One rumor is that her body was found shredded to pieces, and many people believe this is proof of werewolves in the surrounding wilderness. You know, I had never heard of the werewolves, I don't think, when I was going to Conowa. Really? I think I might have heard it once, but I think, I assume people must have been talking about something else. I mean, I... Right. Went to school during the twilight phase, so I think I must have just thought, I know, oh, I they're think I associated it with twilight. And I was like, oh, they must be talking about twilight. Like, Jacob. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob no, they were talking about werewolves in the woods. But, yeah. Yeah, so that's one theory, and that's probably, like, the biggest theory that, like, differs from the information we have. It is storming so hard, you guys. <sighs> Spooky. Okay, we're going to continue because I don't think this mic will pick that up anyway. I, I don't think, we'll, think so. I think we'll be fine. But it is, the wind is, is howling. Yeah, and that wind is strong. It has not it rained, not rained here in like, in like six, six months. months. Yeah. We actually were going to go out to the cemetery like overnight. And then, of course, the night we decide to do that is the one night in the in six months. Like we're in like this awful drought. Right. But this is the one night that it's going to rain. And it is pouring now, so I'm glad we went earlier. Yep. Anyway, so the werewolves is kind of like the biggest theory about what happened to her. Some others are, other people believes, believe that the human wolves are vampires. Oh, okay. See, I had not heard any of these. Like, even no. growing up in Kanawha around this, like, it was like common knowledge. I had heard the werewolf stuff. Yeah. But the other theories I had not heard. No. So werewolves is kind of like the biggest theory. Um, some people believe that human wolves is talking about vampires. 
Others believe she was killed by the KKK. I don't... I hadn't heard that one either. No. And I'm not sure where they're... I'm not sure what they're basing that on. Right. Yeah. It seems a little bit random. Another theory is that she was a human sacrifice for a satanic cult. I could see this one, actually. I mean, I could I could get that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's been some, like, cult stuff. Like, around here, cult stuff yeah. Around here. That um, I had heard of, like, the cult stuff yeah, I heard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely around here. Um, I have a personal story with that one. Which I, did I talk about it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It will be in a future episode. But I have a story with the satanic cult. So, anyway, those are kind of the biggest, like, paranormal theories. But the truth isn't quite that paranormal, but it's possibly even more tragic. About a week after her death, local doctor Abraham Yates and local either school teacher or principal, Fred O'Neill, were arrested for Catherine's murder. I had seen that he was a school teacher, and I had also seen he was the principal, so I kind of just put both in the notes. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Because I'm not sure which one. Some sources say teacher and some say principal. Okay. Um, which are really... That's we'll really, get to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'll see why I wanted to include both because it could really change um, change things once we kind of get further into it. So Dr. Abraham Yates and teacher or principal Fred O'Neill were arrested for Catherine's murder. These men had also been arrested two months earlier for the murder of another woman, Elise. I had also seen Elsie, but most of it said Elise, so we're going to go with Elise. So Elise Stone a young teacher at Kanawha. Both women were said to have died from a quote-unquote criminal operation. The coroner's report revealed that Catherine, quote, would have become a mother within the next six months. Dr. Yates is accused of attempting to prevent that result. Yikes. Yeah, it gets heavy real fast. So, sorry. Sorry, no more. put a trigger warning. Yeah, trigger warning on all history episodes. Yes. If there's... Paranormal entities involved. It was tragic. It was tragic. You know, it was tragic. And yeah, this one was absolutely so tragic. Um, so we all know. We all know what happened. Um, and Dr. Yates convinced Catherine's parents that she was suicidal. So they consented to the operation. It was performed on October 10th, 1917. And Catherine died later that day from complications. Yikes. Yeah. 18 years old. I can't even imagine. I know. It's so awful. Um, I was so sad, like, researching all of this Mm -hmm. and, like, learning more about her life and everything. It was so tragic. So the other woman, Elise, was pretty far along in her pregnancy when her operation was performed. The father was rumored to be Fred O'Neill, the teacher or principal who assisted Dr. Yates and was also arrested for these murders. Fred was married and not to Elise. Uh Uh-oh, that's not good. That's why I wanted to include, um, I don't know if he was a teacher or a principal. But if he was principal. But if he was principal and she was a young school teacher. That's messed up. That is, yeah. Like, yeah. No. That's, I just felt like that needed to be included because I don't know what happened. But if he was, what it was. If he was um, in a position of authority over her, that's. Exactly. I felt like that should be included mm-hmm. because that is awful, awful, awful. So, Elise's operation took place on August 15th, 1917, but due to complications, she suffered for four days before she died on August 19th. Oh, yeah, four days. Four days. So awful. So, the initial murder charges ended up being dropped to manslaughter, and Elise's friends testified about the relationship between Elise and Fred O'Neill while they were both working at Van Lusa School, which is a smaller school pretty close to Kanawha. So I think they had maybe both previously worked there and then ended up teaching in Kanawha. It wasn't very clear. Yeah. There wasn't like a clear timeline of where they taught when, but obviously they had taught together at Bamusa. But the things I had seen were saying that Fred was a teacher at Kanawha now or a principal at Kanawha. So not totally sure, but they taught together at some point and he was either a teacher or principal. Gotcha. However, on February 22nd, 1918, the jury on Elise Stone's case acquitted Dr. Yates and were deadlocked 11 to 1 for conviction for O'Neill. So they both ended up being acquitted. Okay. And then for some reason, the pending case for Catherine's death never went to court. That's so weird. So, and I can't find anything about that. I really dug for that information. 
and there's nothing about it. There was something in the paper. I found the original newspapers, Mm -hmm. and there was something in the paper for Seminole County saying that, like, oh, I wish I had brought it up. Um, But they were saying that, like, there were pending charges for the cross case that would not be going to court this term or this session. But then they, there's no record of them ever going to court for it. And they, they weren't, they didn't serve any prison time for it. So I don't really know what happened with that. It just never went to court. Wow. Yeah. And then that's really all that we hear. That's kind of the end of, of all of the legal stuff with it. Um, I do know that that Catherine's family ended up moving away. They moved to Warica. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about 100 miles from here. And before they left, they they had Catherine buried by her grandmother in Conawa Cemetery and had the gravestone engraved with the saying, murdered by human wolves. And then they left. And that's really all that we know. That was kind of the end of her story. Um, wow. Really no justice served for her at all. That's so sad. So sad. She was 18 years old and totally backed into a corner. Like, that's so what sad. do you do? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the other girl, too, I don't know exactly how old she was, Elise, but she was a young school teacher in 1917 and she was unmarried. She couldn't have a baby. Like, no. She was completely stuck. It's so sad. So sad. Anyway, so moving on from that, the next thing that we know about any of this is that Dr. Yates died in 1931 and is buried in the same cemetery as Catherine. Wow. Yeah. Um, and his, his grave is so close to hers, you can see it. Like, if you stand at his grave, you easily see hers. It's, Which is just so weird. Like, it's really weird that they're buried so close together. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's a... It's a smaller cemetery, but it's not that small. They easily could have buried him on the other side of the cemetery, right? knowing the history. Right. Um, it's just really strange that they're so close. So as Catherine's gravestone gained notoriety, it became the target of vandalism and theft. The headstone was stolen multiple times, sometimes being dumped nearby and other times being returned later. It was stolen again in 2016 and has never been seen since. So sad. Yeah. So we went there right before recording this to do our investigation part. And yeah, it's gone. It took us a little while to find the location of it. It did. It's just gone. It's really sad. We could only find it because her grandmother's grave is beside it. Right. And there is, um, it's interesting because people will leave little tokens on the Yeah, they leave little trinkets and stuff, like Mm -hmm. little like rocks and crystals and like coins um, flowers, stuff like that. But there were a lot on there. Most of the graves had nothing near them at all, but hers was covered. Much filled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was really interesting. Um, but I wish that her headstone was back where it belongs. Like, yeah, it should be. Like, if yeah, people need to have a little bit more respect for people that have yes passed on. Leave the poor girl alone. She had a rough enough life. Exactly. I mean, come on. Let her. Let her death Let her be a little more peaceful. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it became very notorious. Um, everybody kind of knew about the grave, and that's a lot of rumor spread about her death because it wasn't – not that it wasn't widely known. I mean, it was in the paper. I was able to find the paper from 1917, but um, it really just took off. People kind of made up their own stories about it. And actually, in 2004, author Stephen, I don't know how to say his last name. I'm not sure either. Waddell? I don't know. W-E-D-E-L. Wrote a fictionalized account of Catherine's story in his book, Murdered by Human Wolves. This book includes a real interview with paranormal researcher Mary Franklin. Mary states in this interview that all city records for that time period were lost in a fire at City Hall. And that even the local library had no records for the years 1916 and 1917. That's crazy. That was really interesting. Yeah, that's weird. She is convinced that something is up, that that the story is not as it's told. So, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I have not personally tried to go and check the records from those years, but she had said that the records from those years were lost. And she's convinced that there's something sinister going on surrounding that. Um, She also said that according to one of her sources, who she didn't name, so I don't know, 
But according to that source, there were 86 mysterious violent deaths during that time period. Wow. Which is a lot that for would a be, tiny town. I mean, that would be a significant percentage of your town population. A ton. Yeah. Um, this information obviously has not been confirmed. So who knows? Um, yeah. And I, I'm a bit of a skeptic. I tend to doubt that. But yeah, she is convinced that there's something up. She's been actually doing a lot of paranormal investigations, like with Catherine's grave. And so a lot of the like spooky things that have been reported in the cemetery were reported by her. Some are just kind of well-known things that, that happen there. But a lot of them are, are kind of reported by her. Because she's been out there a lot. She's done a lot of, like, EVP sessions with Catherine and Dr. Yates. Oh, um, wow. And she's been able to get some stuff, it said in the interview anyway. I have not personally heard them, but mm-hmm. she was able to get some things. So I'm going to kind of go through go through the spooky stuff. Are you yeah, ready for some I'm, spooky stuff? I'm ready for spooky. Okay. I'm always ready for spooky. So the main thing that people report hearing is phantom growling noises near Catherine's grave. Okay, which is... Which is... Should we say it now? Yeah, Yeah, let's say it now. Okay. It's kind of spooky because I didn't hear it, but... But while we were at Catherine's grave, I heard a growling noise. Now, granted, like, I heard barking before it. Right. Like, there are dogs around. There's dogs. It's a pretty, like, public area. Right. And there's coyotes because it was getting dark. But, like, we're used to that. We, We know what that sounds like. But I heard... I heard a growling noise, like, behind us. Like, I mean, it didn't sound like it was right behind us. Like, it sounded a ways off, but it sounded like a growling, not barks that carry a long ways away. It sounded like a growl. Yeah, and growls don't carry. Like, no. Like, you have to be pretty close for that. Yeah. I didn't hear it. And it, didn't but... pick, it didn't pick up on the mic. No, it didn't. We went back and checked the recordings. Um, but, I mean, it, it freaked me out. Right, I, enough to where she said, did you hear that? Yeah. So, so... I, I, Yeah. Yeah, and so that was so funny to watch your face when I said that. Yeah. Because <laughs> she doesn't know this stuff. Like, yeah, I, I didn't I'm the one that did on research this for this one. She's going to do the next one. Yeah, I didn't realize that that was something common that's her near her grave. Yeah, so she heard that without, like, having that in her head. Yeah. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> She's, like, literally shaking right now. Um, okay, so that's the most reported one is the growling. Okay, well, yep, like, verify that. <laughs> Okay, so the next one, um, paranormal researcher Mary Franklin has reported many strange occurrences in the cemetery. Some of these include a phantom shack. That is bizarre. No, Isn't that weird? Yeah, I'm so, so glad we didn't see that one. That's creepy, right? So the story behind this is she and her team saw a shack on the property the first night they visited. They were just kind of like, I think just driving by. They didn't, I don't think they even really went into the cemetery, but they were kind of checking it out and they were going to come back the next day. But when they went back the next day, during the daytime, there were no buildings at all on the property. And there are not. There are no buildings Mm -hmm. out there. No, there's no buildings. Nothing that could even look like a building. Um, Nothing. I mean, we drive by it all the time. Like, we're we're used to seeing that cemetery. Um, There are no buildings. And we were just out there. But she is, like, convinced that that there was a shack out there because she said that she, like, made a mental note or they even talked to each other about, like, oh, great, there must be a caretaker there. We can ask Mm. for, like, ask him to show us around. Yeah. Um, but there's, weird. there are no buildings there. So no, it's a phantom none. shack. That's so weird. I've never heard of a phantom shack before. Right? Like, Isn't I... that so strange? <laughs> um, another one is she has gotten numerous EVPs, she reports, including a female voice, presumably Catherine, telling Mary that she was murdered by Dr. Yates. And then immediately after this information, a male voice said, get out. I won't tell you again. Get out. I will come out of this grave and kill you. I have to say, like, I'm a I, little bit skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Number one, that. that's a very long EVP. That's I've never heard EVPs, like, actually recorded EVPs. Be that I mean, long? Be More that than, long. like, a couple of words. And I'm, and granted, I'm not, like, an expert. Like, I have not, you know, watched right. tons and tons of videos on EVPs. But I'm, of, of the ones that I've listened to and watched, I've never heard EVPs that are very long. They're just a couple words. Yeah. Not very long at all. That's a very, very long... It is. I would be really interested to hear it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm i not so sure about that one. I mean, obviously, I wrote it down because it's been reported and it's spooky, but I also am very skeptical of that. 
Yeah, I I don't think so. No. And then when doing an EVP session at Dr. Yates' grave, Mary asked if there were any werewolves in Kanawha, and a male voice replied, several. I am also skeptical of that, and you guys will see um, in future episodes why I'm skeptical of that. Yes. Because it is not the information that we got when we spoke to Dr. Yates. Yep. Not, not so what we got. That contradicts what we got, for sure. Definitely. Um, and then she also reported a strange howling from inside the cemetery, which uh, I don't want to just, like, debunk everything. Like, right. it's supposed to be spooky. Like, Yeah. But also, we are in Oklahoma and we do have There's coyotes. coyotes everywhere. Yeah. Like, we hear them and we didn't think anything of it, but right. also we've grown up out here and so we know yeah there's there's coyotes everywhere yeah so like everywhere they yeah. were they were all around you could hear them oh yeah we could hear them as it started lot. getting dark yeah um, yeah but there were none inside the cemetery or that close and they're not going to get that close no um not unless there's a really really big pack and they, right. they're really it's really brave really brave um, but no i mean they're pretty skittish animals really so yeah Anyway, um, kind of debunking that one too, I suppose. But okay, the last thing. This uh, this one's a little ridiculous. I have to admit, I'm not saying it's not true. I don't know. I wasn't there, but it doesn't sound true to me. Um, I'll just read it and let you guys tell me what you think or whatever. I guess not tell me. You're not going to answer. <laughs> anyway, um, here's the last thing that I don't. I don't know if that's true. She states that she was contacted by a man who claimed to be from a clan of werewolves living in Kanawha who wanted to meet her at the cemetery. She stated that when she went to meet them, she found two men who appeared to be in their 80s and had glowing eyes. She stated that they were on the other side of the graveyard but came sprinting toward her like teenagers when they saw her. She started running to her car to escape but didn't think she could outrun them. At that moment, her cousin who had come with her stepped out of the trees surrounding the cemetery and asked her why she was running. She turned around and the men were gone. What do you think about that one, Catherine? I, I don't buy that one. I don't either. It's too it's, strange. It's too strange. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what to do with that information. Yeah. Um, and which trees are she, is she talking about? Like, I, There's not the, trees. I mean, there's a thin line of trees, or then on the other side of the Very road from the cemetery, thin. there's another line of trees. Right. But then that you're, Maybe like, on somebody's can't... property. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... Mm. I'm, I mean, maybe. I guess if she came in, like, from the opposite end that we did, maybe. That sounds more but like a story. This sounds more like a fictional it story really that does. somebody wrote, not yeah. a real And experience. I will say, I will say, it was included, like, in... Sorry if you guys in can this, hear the rain. It's really heavy it's right so now. It's so loud. I don't know what to do about it. So, sorry. I will say, like, this information came from that fictionalized retelling. But it was included in the back. And it's supposedly a true interview. Okay. Supposedly nothing was changed. Okay. However, I seriously question that. Yeah. Because I just, I don't buy it. Yeah. Um, and if nothing was changed, then I, but I, I still don't. I still don't buy it. I still don't buy that that happened. I mean, I've grown up here and I've never run into werewolves. No. Or 80-year-old men with glowing eyes who run like teenagers. No, and I've been to many, like, you know, birthday bashes out in the middle of nowhere in the country. Right. And I've never, we've, you know, played Capture the Flag and yeah. all those kind of totally in the dark games and never run across oh yeah anything we did a lot of hide and seek in the dark in the woods like yeah never experienced anything like that yeah i just don't i just don't buy it i don't buy it either especially because like it all stems from that one line on that headstone and yeah the information that we have shows it tells the story Right. It shows that, yes, it was tragic, but it wasn't paranormal. Right. So, I don't know. It's still spooky, but, but I do have to admit, I don't, I don't think there are werewolves. Yeah. However, a lot of people do think there are werewolves, and they think it was werewolves. That's crazy. Or a satanic I mean, cult. Uh, the cult. The I mean, cult, I can, I can get behind that. I, I, I can see I can see that, that I have possible. heard multiple stories of yes. while I was in Carnival about satanic cult stuff. Right. 
So. Um, so that one's possible. I really do think this is just a really tragic story. I do too. Um, yeah. But there are definitely paranormal aspects because we experienced that. And you guys, we cannot wait for you guys to hear Whew. what we got today because it was wild. It was wild. Are- and just remember, guys, like, we're not, like, people that, um, I mean, we're more skeptical We're people. We're pretty skeptical. I mean, we just, like, debunked all of the paranormal stuff in the story, basically. Yeah. But... Uh, I can't explain some of the stuff that we got tonight. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited to to show it to you guys. However, we're not going to show it right now. We're waiting until next week. So um, tune in next week. Tune in next week. Um, I don't know how, I don't know how to end this. But anyway, thank you guys for listening. I know this was a little bit of a mess. We're still trying to kind of find our groove. We are also going to apologize ahead of time because... Well, you know, Again, we had those technical malfunctions. So I can't be trusted with technology. Apparently. So we're doing our best to to fix what did not get picked up on the mics. Um, and we've, we've, we've got ideas of how to fix it. But um, we apologize if the audio quality is not great the next couple of episodes. We will fix that for future episodes. And I will pay better attention to whether my mic is on. I will double check her mic. <laughs> Um, in every episode, from and here I will on no out. longer touch Madison's phone with the yeah. I I will be device. in charge of all technology from here on out. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. Thank you guys for listening. Um, Thank you guys. Hope yeah. you guys have a spooky week. Yeah, stay spooky.